folks, Riley with ConcealedCarry.com here at the Springfield Armory booth, SHOT Show 2019. We're super stoked to be here with Rob Latham. And uh, Rob's holding a new rifle of theirs, the this is, Saint Victor. Yep. Which is cool. Yeah, we Looks just awesome. we just introduced it. It has a couple changes. The, the it's going to supersede a version we call the free floater, which it has a free floating handguard. We've changed right. the shape just a little bit of the M locks. It feels bit. really nice in the hand. Well, the and it is, and we we got a. This is a real common grip position now sure. over the top. Sure. So we just took the rail off the top to make that a little more friendly. Yeah. Ran the. And, and you get a little bit of weight savings there too. Yeah, though. we do. It took yeah. a little bit of weight off. Yeah. And it ran the the handguard all the way out to just behind the comp. Yeah. Just so you, no matter what position your hand wants to go into, you can get on it, and you can get any position you want, and you can lean it against things and not get change the point of yeah. impact. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We actually didn't really come to talk, uh, you know, too much about the Saint Victor here, but. Uh, well, we can. <laughs> You've been talking about guns all week, but I have a question for you. Last year, you started teaching this class with Mike Seeklander. Zoolander. <laughs> Make that official. And, yeah. Zoolander. And, and tagging Seeklander in this video, by the way. Yeah. We'll have to do like a oh, response video uh, oh, with him. Oh, he will. But he'll, he's not here. Uh, he'll come back some he, way, he, one he, way or the other. He he'll can't come defend back. himself. Yeah, he should have been here. We'll, we'll see him in NRA or should've something. Should have been here. <laughs> but uh, you guys, you started teaching this class called The Bigger Circle. Mm -hmm. And everybody's out there like, what the crap is the bigger the bigger circle? So I was hoping you could elaborate on that for us. Well, it's almost kind of like the bigger picture. Um, yeah. All these little cliques get together. You know, the self-defense guys are over here, and they all have their own little world. And the competition shooters are over here with their little world. The law enforcement shooters are over here. The tactical guys are over here. And then you have just sports shooters and recreational shooters that don't have any particular interest other than entertainment. Sure. One of the things that's bothered me over the years is people create a perception based on their interests. The only thing that matters is what they think that moment in their little genre. So you, so you take the competition shooter and his goal is always to shoot the very best score you can every time, which is basically shooting the best points you can yep. in the quickest time possible. If it's a speed shoot, their accuracy shoots at times less important, but the, the accuracy component is always in place. Then you take the self-defense shooter and his whole goal is simply, you know, how the whole world applies to just self-defense. And there are a lot of people that, that tie in their own little world and create their own little Jesus and their own little this is the way to do it and you can't have anything else. Then there's a the law enforcement. So law enforcement has a complete different set of parameters. I mean, their shoot and not shoot parameters are completely different than a self-defense guy and completely different than, than the military. So whether you're a group doing an entry, whether you're, you've are you been attacked and you're responding to that, or you're just a guy shooting a match, or just somebody else shooting, the one component that is consistent amongst all of it is the mechanics of shooting do not change. Right. Now, we might change the test. Like the self-defense shooter is likely to want to keep the distances to a position where it's close and easy because that's most likely where your threat is the greatest. You know, when somebody's 50 yards away from you with a knife, they're not that big a threat yet. But when they're five feet from you with a knife, they are a huge threat right. and more important than, the, than a competition shooter, the result of that. So the competition shooter says, well, the shooting you guys are doing is so easy. You're shooting at five feet. Well, it is true. The shooting component is easy, but you have to remember the two elements that are involved are speed and accuracy. And when someone has a knife five feet from you, if they're already moving towards you, I got bad news for you. You're gonna get cut if you don't do something about it. Tactics play a, play a point in that, but speed shooting plays the biggest point in that. You know, your best tool in that circumstance is most likely to not get cut. Depends on can you stop the person by shooting him? Or do you have to get out of the way or do you have to go hand to hand? There's, there's so many different options. Right. But the component of shooting now becomes super speed with some accuracy. The competition says it's too easy. It's too simple. Yeah. I don't care about that. That's fine, that's his little world. So when Mike and I put this whole thing together, we said, well, wait a minute, why can't we do a thing where Mike came in and his, his specific point of interest in the class yeah. was to address it from the self-defense position. Right. And Which Mark, he's well That's what he does. Yeah. That's his thing. He's also very but good competitively. But he's a great shot. He's the yeah. IDPA national champion, champion. right now. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's a fantastic shot because he recognizes that not only is there a, a skill element involved in competition shooting, there's a skill element involved in self-defense in this case. So I, my point is I always ask people, why do you think the most elite military groups in the country and the world 
regularly draw on people like me to come and teach them. They really don't care what I have to say about tactics. Mm -hmm. They really don't want to hear my views on CQB. Mm -hmm. That's not what they're there for. But when they find themselves in a circumstance, they want to perform as good as they can, as well as possible, reliably hit the targets as quickly as possible. Yeah. That never changes, whether the target's 50 yards away, whether the target's five feet away. Does the time component change? Does the accuracy component change? Yes, but the techniques to make that work don't change, whether it's a competition environment. Do the results matter? Absolutely. In a competition, I'm gonna lose 10 points. Right. That's tragic to yeah. a competition They shooter. make the difference between winning the championship and not. Right, right. and to a self-defense shooter, he looks at that as going, who cares, you're playing a game. <laughs> and he's right. We're yep. playing a game. But the techniques, and, the, and, and when you even go down to things as basic as gripping the gun, there's so much similarity to it that it's odd. It's, I explain it, I'm a Star Trek, I'm a Trekker, so sorry, you're gonna get one of these. <laughs> there was an episode of Star Trek where there was a guy on there and half of his face was black, half of his face was white. There was another guy on there that was exactly the opposite. And to everybody else, they all looked the same, but the reality is one guy's white and black and the other guy was black and white. Right. So they're at odds with each other and they're warring like the bloods of the freaking Crips. Because they're like, oh, they're, they're, they both are completely opposite and they hate each other and they've hated each other since the dawn of time. But if you and I look at them, we see exactly the same people and don't even see the change. That's kind of how the bigger picture looks at shooting. Okay, so you want to learn how to shoot fast. Why is that different from a paper target than a human target? The self-defense guy will say, because the result is more important. Mm -hmm. That's not the point. Yeah. I agree with that. The result is more important, but it doesn't change the fact that the skill required to do that is still the same. So why wouldn't you want to be the best shooter you can? And that's what this, the, the bigger circle classes are. It's to dress. We don't care what you need it for. It doesn't matter. We're going to teach you how to shoot things close, fast. And we're going to teach you how to things, shoot things far accurately. Yeah. And how can that possibly hurt you? Okay. So bigger circle, mm -hmm. you got all these different groups of shooters. Mm -hmm. They're in their own little worlds, their mm -hmm. own little circles. They're comfort Gotta, zones. It's a comfortable so, area to be. Yep, yep, so bigger circle is an attempt to bring that together. Right. Yeah. It's, it, the, the concept is what can we learn from each other? Yeah. And the reality is a lot. Yep. Because when that self-defense guy comes in there and says, well, I don't really care if I hit the target at 25 yards. The competition says, yeah, but I can make a circumstance where you'd want to be able to do that. I get it. Mm -hmm. And the competition, or the the, comp, the, the, the self-defense shooter comes in and says, well, I need to be good right here. And he's right, but he needs to be fast. So then you hear some adages, you know, and some silly techniques, but some adages like, you know, slow is smooth and smooth is fast and fast is accurate and all this stupid crap. The fact is, you know what's fast? Fast is fast. Sometimes erratic and quick is fast. Yeah. Sometimes violent is fast. So it really becomes a different series of things to learn. And in the bigger, the, the bigger circle class is bringing all those people together. Let's see, what we, it's a symposium. Yeah. And I've taught so many classes at this point that I no longer care whether the student walks up to me as wearing a duty rig or he's wearing a, a concealed gun or he's got a Ipsic open gun. Sure. And that's what it is. Wow, okay. Well, that clar clarifies it greatly. You know, I mean, like I said, I kind of was wondering what the whole deal was with bigger circle. It's um, actually a great class. Uh, yeah. Hey, Barry, it, you know, if, you, if you had a chance to actually get in there, no matter where you come from, no matter what the site it is, I guarantee you there's something you'll pick apart in that class. And you'll have some sort of belief that you follow and go like, that's stupid. But you will not be able to tear apart what we cover as far as techniques and skills. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And we practice harder shots and easier shots because easier shots are too easy. Yeah. What do you as a competition guy get, I mean like, Tell me, through the years, what have you learned from the defensive shooters? There's a result. Or the tactical well, guys? Well, as, as a rule, the tactical guys, do you want the positive or the negative or both? The negative side from the tactical guys, you always practice things too easy and things you can get out of every fight by being smarter. And the reality is sometimes you're in the middle of a fight before you know it. Mm -hmm. At that point, your only solution is shooting, mm -hmm. all right? The positive thing is a smart, a tactical person doesn't get in that fight. Yeah. So it's a two-edged sword, right? right? So if you're staying aware of your circumstances, yeah. wrong place, wrong time. Don't be wrong place, wrong time. But when there is no way out of it, you're in the fight before you knew it, you're second person to a gunfight, 
your only chance at that point is shooting skill. No. That's it. Or other skills, I should say. There are other skills other than shooting. Awesome. Rob, thanks for taking a few minutes of your time no. to explain that no. to us. It's and, always a joy talking you know, to you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I see it as we have a lot going on in the two-way community as well. Mm -hmm. course, you know, centered around gun rights and everything. Is, oh. You know, and, and I think bigger circle concept could be applied there as well. Well, we'll it does. We'll need to work together, come together. That's You, you, know, you know, you hit that perfectly. I didn't mean to, to hijack you there, but sure. you're exactly right. It's more, they're, I, I shoot shotguns and rifles and pistols. And you know, there's groups of other divisions that couldn't care less about you having your pistols. Yeah. yeah. They don't care. There's right. a group that says, I don't care. I got my shotgun. I don't care. But as, though, as though there's a difference in any of it. Because they think the anti-gunners, well, they're not after my, my $12,000 shotgun. shotgun. Yeah. They're after your pistols. So my easy way out is to not defend you. Guys, we're all in the same fight. Yeah. They want all your guns, not just my assault rifle. Thank you, sir. Right. Don't forget the bigger circle. And thanks again, Rob. All right, man. Thank you very much. Take care.